There are two basic approaches you can adapt when you think about the role of technology in society. One is known as technological determinism and the other one is known as the social construction of technology. So technological determinism means that the technology determines the outcome. Hence the name, technological determinism. So, for example, when somebody says the internet implies freedom and democracy, so the internet is inherently good, that means that the internet determines the outcome. It's good, it implies freedom and democracy. Uh, what is also technological determinism is if somebody would say the internet implies an informational dictatorship, total control, complete surveillance. The internet is inherently bad. That also means that the technology determines the outcome. Actually, the oldest vision of the information society was not presented or elaborated by some kind of academic or an entrepreneur or something. It was. Uh, written out by a novelist, George Orwell, who in 1948 wrote a book called 1984, where he painted a very bleak picture about an informational dictatorship. Uh, and by now, some people say, with many secret services, almost all secret services around the world, employing thousands of computer scientists and mathematicians to do surveillance work, some people say, well, the internet maybe is inherently bad. What we have to be aware is that that is also technological determinism. Now, as you can see here, how can the internet at the same time be good and bad? How can it at the same time imply democracy and an informational dictatorship? Well, the truth is more that technology is inherently neither good nor bad. That's why a social constructionist then would argue that technology has different outcomes. And these outcomes have to be socially constructed. They have to be chosen in a proactive way. Um, technology is just a tool. Think about the hammer. A hammer is also just a tool. Now, a hammer can be extremely useful. You couldn't build a house or you couldn't even hang up a picture with something that is at least equivalent to a hammer. But everything that is functionally equivalent to a hammer can also be used to hurt other people or even kill them. Now, is this the fault of the hammer? No, the hammer is not inherently good or bad. The hammer is just a tool. And there are many discussions like this going on with regard to technology. For example, some people say that guns don't kill people. People kill people. So it's a social choice, the, the choice of an individual to use guns for this or for another purpose. For example, for hunting. Uh, the atomic bomb is another example. Some people might say, well, the goal of producing as many atomic bombs that we have as we have right now on, on Earth, uh, is to destroy the Earth. Therefore, technologically, deterministically, inevitably, atomic bombs will destroy the Earth. Well, at least for the last 60, 70, 80 years, we did, we did a pretty decent job uh, in preventing this technological determinism. So there seems to be a role for social choice, for social construction. But these last two examples, guns and bombs also show you that while technology might not be inherently good or bad, they might also not be neutral. Guns are made to shoot things and bombs are made to blow things up. So, so technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. Well, this is more a philosophical statement and, and you would always wish that philosophers would tell you it's black or white, but they never do. They tell you it's not this and not that, but it's also not that. But, but that's how it is. It makes intuitively sense, right? So the result of the story is that we shape our tools and our tools then also shape us. It is very important that we start to understand this difference because we often catch ourselves in newspapers and political statements and, and business strategies are full of technologically deterministic statements. I often catch myself saying things like digitalization implies efficiency. Now, of course, you cannot qualify every statement because it only applies efficiency if in this case and in that case that you couldn't have a conversation if you would have to qualify every statement. So sometimes we say technologically deterministic 
things, but we just have to recognize that actually technology and digitalization does not imply necessarily efficiency. Digitalization can make you extremely inefficient as well. So we just have to not take these statements by face value and recognize them for what they are. Because by doing that, we also understand that actually we have a social responsibility to shape, for example, the digital revolution. It is a, a process of social construction. So digitalization by itself doesn't have a predetermined outcome. It is on us. The responsibility is with our generation to assure that digitalization is used for the benefit of society.